Well, Razorback fans, the Arkansas Razorback baseball team is through two weeks of fall practice now, which means we're starting to get a little bit of a sample size, starting to see who the guys are. On today's show, the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, I'm going to be touching on some freshmen that have really caught my attention and gotten the respect of head coach Dave Van Horn. And afterwards, we are going to reassess where things stand with the Arkansas lineup and see who's projected to start and how we feel about the team position by position. All that and more on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So again, we are two weeks through practice now, so not a not a ton going on, but we have a little bit better idea at some things, you know, some variables coming into this Arkansas baseball offseason uh, that we had, didn't really know about. We've gotten our first official look at some of the players on the team, uh, and then they've had to make them, we've had to make these players follow it up with another weekend. So, a little, some of the storylines that were emerging from week one, uh, a few of them are sticking around. And when I say a few of them, I'm, I'm thinking specifically about three freshmen. The first I want to talk about is on the pitching side uh, Cole Gibbler, the freshman lefty from the state of Texas. Um, to say that he's been unreal would be an understatement. He's been pretty much 95 miles an hour every pitch, again, from the left side. And I think it says a lot about him that they put him in a quote-unquote starting role. He's thrown one inning each in each of his outings. But the fact that they're giving him the ball to start some of these scrimmages tells you a little bit about how they feel about him. So he strikes out the side in his first inning of work as a Razorback facing collegiate hitters for the first time. Uh, and then this week, he struck out three Walked one, that one being Brenton Clark, who we're going to talk about in just a second, another freshman. Uh, so he's faced seven hitters and struck out six. Um, and so we're talking about legitimate swing and miss stuff. Again, a left-handed freshman that throws 95. I don't really think I need to sell you too much on this. And again, I'm referencing two innings of work that I've watched. Uh, but typically, as I've said before, it doesn't take long. When you have a blue chip freshman and a guy who can really help you right away, it usually doesn't take long for them to settle in and find their footing and assert themselves as one of the top arms on the team. Uh, and I would say that Cole Gibbler, frankly, has done that through two scrimmages so far. Um, now, there's been a lot of freshmen that have gotten on the mound, uh, been some good moments from a lot of them. Uh, Tag Andrews, I know he had a rough go of it in, in week one, but he came back and threw really well in week two. Uh, and I think all of the arms on this team, really, even the freshmen, redshirt freshmen, whoever, like Arkansas doesn't just bring guys to campus for the for the fun of it. You know, uh, all these guys are coming in here with a chance to really compete, really help this squad. And whether or not they end up cracking the rotation or Arkansas's kind of bullpen workload uh, doesn't mean that all these guys are not supremely talented, big time pieces that can help anyone in the country, man. It just tells you, though, about the level of play that Matt Hobbs has gotten this Arkansas pitching staff to over the years. I mean, it's become a real factory. And so there's going to be a lot of really talented players that just don't get a chance to really show it this year for Arkansas. But on the mound, man, Arkansas is as deep as they've ever been. And, uh, you know, again, we're, we're talking about one to two inning sample sizes. A few guys have gone two innings. Uh, so three combined in the two weekends, but we really, it's not like we've gotten a ton to work with, uh, with some of these guys, like someone I think about like Ben Bybee, for example, who's thrown really well, but he's also given up a home run. And so if you count it up his numbers, you know, you give up one run in three innings, like that's a 3.00 ERA. We're talking about a very small sample size, but I thought his stuffs looked really good. Well, Gibbler, it's been just the two innings, but I mean, you struck out every single hitter you faced except one. Uh, you know, you're doing something right. And so I think early on, and Carson Wiggins, I should mention, threw in week one. I didn't see him throw. I went to both scrimmages this past weekend, did not see Carson Wiggins throw. Uh, he threw one inning last week, but again, gave up a home run in his one inning of work. And so it kind of skews it. Um, and I'm not saying that Cole Gibbler is the only freshman that's going to help Arkansas on the mound this year. I think there's going to be plenty that have a chance to do it. Uh, but I think if you're looking for like a blue chip guy to right off the bat, uh, pencil him in for some work, I think Cole Gibbler is that guy. We'll see if they choose to use him as a midweek starter or, you know, how they want to go about using him. Maybe he's going to be a closer. I mean, Arkansas, we saw them last year with a guy in Gabe Gackle pretty much go the entire year with a freshman closer. So wouldn't be the craziest thing in the world. Um, but there are also two freshman hitters now that I do want to talk to you about because these are two guys. Now, Gibbler was a massive recruit. So him being good, frankly, is not like a huge surprise. If Carson Wiggins had come to campus and started just mowing dudes down, wouldn't have been a huge surprise. Uh, and so I'm not saying that it is a surprise necessarily that these players are playing well, but to say that they were penciled into like be starters would just be revisionist history. 
Uh, like, frankly, I think that was kind of one of the things we talked about during the MLB draft is, you know, there's not really a ton of guys in this Arkansas draft class that are like being viewed as potential signees with MLB teams. And so uh, I feel like a lot of people over the country just kind of underrated Arkansas's freshman class. And I would even say myself, like I kind of overlooked it a little bit. I didn't seriously take, you know, some of these guys in this freshman class as like real candidates to push for a starting role right away. And I think more of that is just about Arkansas's roster and the way they construct it. I think they've got, they've got a lot of older guys at key positions. You've got a lot of returners. You've got one of the best shortstops in the country. And so, you know, it's not that I didn't think these freshmen were going to be good, but uh, they've made it a legitimate conversation where I'm starting to rethink a little bit of how I feel about this Arkansas lineup and where some of these guys might fit in. Uh, and we'll see how it evolves. I mean, it's still very early in the process. We're talking about two weeks into fall practice. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of ebb and, ebbs and flows and ups and downs. And some of these guys are going to you know, have good scrimmages, bad scrimmages. We'll see how we feel about this team coming into February. But I did want to just kind of reassess the situation. So later in the show when I'm projecting the Arkansas lineup, a little bit of it is just kind of updating from where we felt two weeks ago. And I'll be honest with you, two weeks ago, I wouldn't have told you that Brenton Clark was going to have a chance to start for Arkansas in the outfield. I think after two weeks of fall ball, it's pretty much impossible to say otherwise. Uh, who knows if he'll end up cracking that top three, but if we were just going off of who has been Arkansas's top three best, most productive outfielders in the four scrimmages so far, Brenton Clark has clearly been in that group, and he might be the number one most productive one. He's been unreal left-handed. He takes it. He's taken a couple walks. I don't know if I've seen him strike out yet, uh, so his bat-to-ball skills are really high, uh, and he's not hitting home runs that are like 450-foot just mammoth shots, but just everything that comes off his bat is a line drive, and man, he's just been abusing Arkansas pitching. He's just really, you know, every single, just about every single, I think he might have a hit in every single scrimmage. Uh, he had a two-home run scrimmage, and then the other day, he was a triple shy of the cycle. I mean, the dude's just been unreal, and so yeah, if you, if you were ranking Arkansas's outfielders so far in fall practice, I would have a hard time saying he's not number one. Again, I'm not saying he's going to finish up that way. I'm like, oh, hey, Sharpie, I'm in. Like, he's guaranteed starting in right field, left field, or whatever. Um, but I would say that he has absolutely made himself a part of the conversation, which that alone is, like, more than I expected to happen. Like, I thought Arkansas had plenty of veteran options in the outfield to where you weren't really going to see a freshman break his way into that group. Uh, but Brenton Clark, through two weeks, says, not so fast. Uh, just hold my beer. Uh, and another guy that I, frankly, didn't see it coming for uh, is Gabe Frazier. This is a shortstop who's been, I mean, the only other shortstop on the team. I mean, they, you know, Vahiva Aloy, I think we can comfortably say that is going to be Arkansas starting shortstop. There's no real debate or controversy going on there. But, you know, in these scrimmages, you have two teams. So that means someone else has to play shortstop. And Gabe Frazier has been that guy, which, again, kind of tells you about how they view him as a defender uh, tools wise. I mean, he's he's got it all, man. His glove, Unreal uh, DVH. I'll, I'll play you guys a little clip of, of what DVH had to say about Clark and Frazier. Talked about some of his his work in the field, which is pretty funny. But uh, Frazier, man, he's a really tall, rangy infielder. Which at shortstop, that's kind of what they look like these days. A lot of these shortstops are taller, rangier guys. Which is, you know, I felt like when I was growing up, if you were like over five nine, it was like, oh, you couldn't. You had to play first base. Like it just wasn't a thing. You didn't see these tall, long athletes. Uh, but Frazier, really good athlete, athlete out there in center field, left handed hitter as well. Uh, he had a couple doubles the other day. He hit a home run off of Carson Wiggins. Uh, he's been barreling up a lot of baseballs, hitting a ton of line drives, uh, and he's he's a pretty good athlete all around. I mean, he checks all the boxes. Um, and look, I, I also got to just clarify that when you're talking about freshmen, most of the time, it's it's not uncommon for these guys to come in and just get mowed down. Like I remember Mason Neville, who's no longer at Arkansas now, he's at Oregon, and he had a really good year last year as a sophomore. Uh, I remember after like three or four scrimmages, he he maybe had one hit. Nolan Souza, there was a point last year in the fall where he was like one for 15 with 12 strikeouts. Like it's very common for these freshmen to be a little bit overwhelmed when the first time they're facing consistent 94, 95, like legit SEC arms for the first time. You'd expect there to be a little bit of an adjustment period. And there really hasn't been for Clark or Frazier. Like they both just look like dudes out there. Um, and so with Frazier, if he's going to really push for a starting lineup spot, it really makes you ask a few questions. You're looking around that infield at guys like Souza, guys like Kozeal. Uh, I feel pretty confident about Bern Iredale and his spot over there at third base. But, you know, it just knocks one guy down a rung. And, man, it, it creates a little bit of a controversy, a little bit of a log jam there. Um, and so, guys, I wanted to show you Dave Van Horn's comments on uh, the two freshmen and kind of what he's seen from them so far. But before that, I want to take a quick break. 
Razorbacks fans, it is that time of year. It is game time time of year. What time is it? It's game time. Uh, there are all kinds of games, sporting events, concerts, whatever the case may be. Game time should be your go-to home for getting your tickets to whatever the event is. Uh, game time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes ticket getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks fluffs out, filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Uh, if you're like me and you are at a wedding and you need just last minute, you need to buy tickets because the Astros advanced to the ALCS. I was in that position last year. Game time is what I used. Uh, they're all, you know, they're all in pricing to, uh, feature shows the total up front with no surprises at checkouts. How often do you do that where you're trying to buy tickets for something and you see a price and then you get to the checkout and you see all these hidden fees all over the place. Uh, game time picks sorts out and curation makes it easier to save more on sports concerts, comedy and theaters, etc. to find the best deal for you. Uh, you get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy low price guarantee or game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, download the game time app, create an account and use code locked on college for $20 off your first purchase terms. Apply again, create an account and redeem code. Locked on college for twenty dollars off. Download game time today. Ooh. Right. Okay, so yeah, I did want to uh <laughs> I did want to show you guys this quick video of Dave Van Horn uh because I asked him about some of the guys that the, these freshmen on his team that have stuck out and uh, Gibbler was the one that really caught his attention early. And, you know, it's pretty simple with a freshman that throws 95. Uh, and he was a little bit, he, he's a little bit reserved. When he's talking about freshmen, he really doesn't like to hype them up before he feels like they've earned it. Uh, so while it may sound like he's not super thrilled and, oh, like he's just kind of being a little, a little, little ho hum about it, this is about as much as you're going to get DBH complimenting freshmen that have not played their first game at Arkansas yet. Uh, Clark, I mean, all he's doing is getting hits. He went one for two today, and probably the first three scrimmages he had, I'm going to say he's already got around 10 hits, and uh, he's got three home runs and a couple extra base hits. And he's a good player. I yeah, had a had a great tournament to end the year out in New Mexico, and uh, I think he was like 12 for 17 or something crazy, and he's picked it up right at where he left off here off some good arms, and that. Frazier's done a great job too. You know, but I'm, I just I want him to feel he's got a he's got an incredible arm. And we're just trying to get him to calm down a little bit with it and stay within and play for a long time. Don't hurt that thing and uh, slow him down. So the freshman will sped up. And he's doing a good job. He made a mistake pitching. You know, he'll he'll pop a double or a homer and uh, you know he's done a tremendous job so far. So I hope y'all enjoyed DVH covering up my face there. I thought the video was going to be bigger, but hey, whatever. Uh, there And like I said, that's about as much of like excitement about freshmen that you'll ever get from DVH because he really doesn't like to prop these guys up before they've played a game. I remember back in the fall when uh, of 2019, or I guess it was fall of 2018, uh, when Christian Franklin was a freshman, and he wouldn't even say his name. He was like, we're going to start a freshman in left field. We think he's got a chance to start for us. Uh, but he like literally wouldn't say his name. Didn't want to hype him up too much. Um, and so we'll see if either of those guys are able to crack the Arkansas starting lineup. Uh, but let's move ahead and let's talk about what that lineup looks like. I'm just going to go position by position, kind of restate where things are at. Uh, and we've, we've talked about this a good bit. If you've been locked on, if you've been locked in with us here on the locked on Razorbacks podcast, we've kind of been projecting the lineup a little bit and who we think has a chance, but, uh, I've never just gone through and been like, Hey, here's my projection. And I probably won't do that until the end of the fall, but Let's just go position by position. So at catcher, uh, I still feel like Ryder Helfrick is the guy to beat. Been pretty good. He's had a couple really nice days at the plate. Uh, you know, has showed off some power, hit a home run, hit a couple doubles, uh, hit a ball opposite field the other day. That was about 108 off the bat and a single to the opposite field. It was just really encouraging stuff. Uh, I think at the plate, we're going to get a much vastly improved version of Ryder Helfrick. And I think defensively, he's about as solid as they come. Uh, he's been pretty pretty reliable back there. I do think the Elliott Peterson kid who came from JUCO and hit 517 at the JUCO level, uh, it took him a while to get going a little bit, but I do think he's going to bring a little bit to the plate. Uh, I haven't seen him much behind the plate at all. I'll tell you, in terms of just straight-up catching, the guy who's really kind of caught my eye is freshman Zane Becker. 
I think that dude can really pick it behind the home plate. Got a good arm, just a really well-rounded skill set as a defensive catcher. Uh, now he hasn't done a ton at the plate, which you wouldn't expect for a freshman catcher facing college pitching for the first time. But uh, he's been very intriguing to me. So we'll see if he's able to kind of get in that rotation, get some spot starts there behind the plate for Arkansas. Uh, and I also want to mention Carson Willis, who's done a pretty good job as a freshman behind the plate. Uh, but yeah, I haven't seen a ton out of Elliot Peterson throwing and catching. Uh, but I think at the plate, he's he's got a chance to be pretty solid there. And so I'd imagine he winds up being kind of the backup secondary catcher. And uh, we'll see if either of those guys, any of those guys behind Helfrick are able to work their way and get some starts on the weekend. And while Helfrick is potentially DH and doing whatever. Um, but moving over to first base is where I think you've got a real log jam. Uh, and I could see a case for Michael Anderson, who's a Rhode Island transfer, with a lot of power. Uh, hasn't been like lighting it up in these scrimmages, but you can kind of see he's a big, strong guy. Ball comes off of his bat loud, um, and I think he's a guy that they like. Uh, defensively at first base, been pretty solid. I think Reese Robinette's got a real chance to be a, be a factor here. What's interesting, though, about Robinette is he's been swinging the bat really well. Like Among all these guys I'm about to list out, Robinette's probably been the most consistent at the plate. He hasn't played a ton of first base in scrimmages. He's done it before. I mean, he's been on campus for three years now. I've seen him play first base here and there. Uh, and he's more comfortable at third base. I mean, he was a third baseman in high school. I think that's where he feels better playing. But just realistically speaking, I feel like Brent Iredale is probably your starter at third base. And DBH said as much when we talked to him on the field the other day. Um, and so I feel like if Robinette's going to crack the the field, it's probably at first base. And so I'm surprised we haven't seen him there more in scrimmages. But I'm sure that will maybe change as we get closer to the season and they start you know, having some of these conversations like we're having right now, where we're kind of trying to figure out where's the best place for everyone to go. But big country is one you can't rule out, man. He had a home run 110 miles an hour the other day. Uh, I believe that was off of Dylan Carter. Uh, that was an absolute rocket. Um, and I mean, you know, he brings a lot at the plate and I think they, they there's a chance they're going to look for somewhere to find him in the field. Uh, and so I'll be interested to see if he starts playing some first base. Another guy that frankly I could see here who has not played first base in scrimmages is Nolan Souza. Or Camden Cozio, whichever one you want, you could take your pick. I think those guys are kind of competing for second base. And if you ask me, Nolan Souza is winning that competition. Uh, but I think there's a chance both end up in the starting lineup. And if that's the case, I feel like that means one of them is moving over to either first base, third base, DH, whatever the case may be. But uh, we'll see if they start to experiment with where they play some of these guys. Uh, so at first base, again, you've got a little bit of a log jam there. Uh, Trenton Rowan is another guy, Juco transfer, that is kind of in this mix as well. Cahio Aloy, Vahiva's brother, big, strong guy, has not really gotten it going at the plate so far, uh, but I know they like him. And first base would be the position he would play if he were going to play the field. <clears throat> Moving on over to second base. Now, I mentioned all offseason, we've kind of talked about how it seems like Souza and Kozeal, the Vanderbilt transfer, are kind of competing for this spot. But I think you've got to throw Gabe Frazier's name into this mix. Uh, just with the way he's played, he's played as well. I mean, I would say he's played better than Kozeal. Souza's been really good. I'm not going to not gonna knock too, Souza too bad. Um, but I feel like both those guys have been pretty comparable in terms of what they've brought in these scrimmages. And so I don't think anybody's like got this position completely locked down. And I mean, if Frazier's going to find a spot to play on the field. I don't think it's going to be a shortstop over Aloy unless something weird happens. Uh, and so I think it's probably third base, second base. Maybe you make a case for throwing him over at first base, but uh, I just felt like we had to mention Gabe Frazier in this second base competition because he's kind of forced the issue here and made it a conversation. Uh, now moving over to third base where I'm also going to throw Gabe Frazier's name in there, but I think Brent Iredale is the guy to beat here at this spot. Um, I mean, offensively, he's clearly going to be in the lineup and in the middle of the order, no matter where he's playing in the field. So if it's maybe you, if you don't think it's third base, maybe you go first base, maybe you go DH, whatever the case may be. Uh, Bern Iredale is going to be in the lineup, and I would assume it's going to be at third base, and DVH said as much the other day. Um, but I'd also throw Nolan Souza and Camden Cozeal in this mix. I feel like it's kind of the same situation there at second and third base, where it's like, you you imagine a lot of these guys that I mentioned are going to be in the lineup. It's just a matter of where. So it could be a little bit of musical chairs until they figure it out. Uh, shortstop, the only two options I feel like are Vahiva Loy and Gabe Frazier. No real controversy there. I don't think we we have to we have to d dive too deep into that. Uh, and now we will turn our attention to the outfield after one more quick break. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, guys. I want hey Razorback fans. Have you heard about Roy? It stands for Return on You, and it is a new platform that lets you, the fans, get involved in NIL like nothing before by making contributions directly to your favorite athletes. 
By supporting players directly, you can help shape rosters, retain talent, and keep your favorite athletes out of the transfer portal. As you all know, NIL has changed the game for athletes. And Roy, again, that's return on you, uh, changes the NIL game for fans. Helps you be a part of it. I know that's been a very popular topic of discussion this week. Uh, and here's why Roy is different. One, it directly supports the players. Roy allows you to, to fans to directly back their favorite college athletes. With Roy, fans can play a key role in shaping the future of their favorite teams with while at, while athletes maximize their name, image, and likeness potential, which is you know good for everyone. It's a win-win all around. Uh, and when fans contribute to a successful campaign, they receive access to exclusive content from the athlete, such as their announcement decisions, behind-the-scenes footage, other personal reflections, all of which are available only to the fans who supported the athlete. Download Roy for iOS or Android and enter referral code LOCKED ON and you'll automatically enter, be entered into a sweepstakes to win $5,000 cash. Visit joinroy.com for additional details if you want to learn more about this. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. If this is intriguing to you, again, download that app. Get the code locked on for an opportunity to win $5,000, and you can check them at visit or at joinroy.com. It's a really, really intriguing little, little NIL thing that I think could be a game changer for you guys. I know that's got to sound intriguing to you, Razorback fans, who want to know what you can do to help. Okay, so we're moving on a little bit. We've we've touched on the infield and kind of where things stands, and I'll be honest, we, things stand, and I'll be honest with you, it's not like the most clear cut situations going on here. But moving over to left field, guys, I view Rocco Pepe, the uh, the Fresno State transfer who started his career at Long Beach State, has been an energy guy, bounced around a little bit. Uh, he's coming off of the best year of his career, hit over three hundred hit 14 home runs, that power starting to evolve as he gets older in his career. So you've got an experienced veteran guy who's tough at the plate. He's not a big guy, but he's, 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 he's intense, man. He looks like a ball player. I think you guys are really going to enjoy watching Rocco Pepe play baseball. I know his teammates enjoy playing with him. He's just a ball of energy. Uh, I believe his teammates used to call him juice or juice box or something like that uh, back at uh, Fresno state. And so we'll see if that nickname follows him here, but Rocco Pepe, I mean, his name's Rocco Pepe. That alone should get you in the door. That should get you seated. Uh, but I think you're going to enjoy him, man. I think he's a high, He's a very aggressive hitter. He's not going to take many walks. I think he only walked like seven or eight times last year. Uh, but he gets on base a good bit. He he doesn't. He hits for a high average. He's hit over 300 multiple times in his career. And he had a career high in home runs last year. So it feels like Arkansas is getting an older veteran guy kind of at the peak of his powers. And to me, he's been really good through a, uh, through a couple scrimmages. He had a really, really nice, by the way, I said earlier that Robinette hit a home run off of, uh, off of Dylan Carter. He did not. He hit it off of Ben Bybee. Now that I'm remembering, cause you know, who hit a home run off of Dylan Carter it was Rocco Pepe. And it was a two strike breaking ball, uh, where he fouled off a couple pitches to get to it. Like just tells you the kind of competitor this guy is. And I really enjoy watching him play. And I think you guys are going to as well. And I would say outside of Charles, uh, Davalon, Davalon, Deval Deval uh, the French Canadian center fielder who we'll touch on next. I'd say outside of him, Pepe's been the most impressive transfer outfielder, uh, and he's been really good. I would say, like I've, I said, Brenton Clark is clearly in that top three best performers in fall practice. I would throw Davoyan and I would throw Pepe in that top three if I were to cut the line off today. Um, so I've got Pepe as the starter there. I think you got to throw Logan Maxwell in there. Potentially there's a platoon situation, uh, and I will also throw the D2 transfer Carson Bowles uh, who got on the board of the hit the other day. I don't think he's going to start there, but just provide some depth. Uh, moving on to center field, I think it's very clearly Charles Davillon and uh, Justin Thomas at his, as his backup there in center field. I think those are kind of like the only two options. And simply put, like davillon has been better. Like, I, I don't know how else to, how else to, uh, to word that. Left-handed, got some power, got some speed, really well-rounded. He's the kind of guy that I have in mind. When DVH was speaking after the, SEMO game where they got eliminated last year and he said they really wanted to up the level of athlete that they bring into the program. Uh, they wanted to get well-rounded, big, strong guys. Davalon's like 5'8", five, 5'9", five, but he's he's that guy. He actually reminds me a little bit of Robert Moore uh, just in terms of his build and the way he carries himself. He's always like, he looks like a ball player. He looks like one of those 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, just, you just look at that guy and you're like, that's a ball player. That's how I feel about Davalon. That's a little bit how I feel about Pepe. Um, and that's how I felt about Robert Moore. And so they're all very different players. I'm just saying, just looking at them, I test build wise, and it's kind of the, the level of athlete they are. I think there's some similarities there. 
Uh, and moving on to right field. So until told otherwise, I've got Kendall Diggs as like my projected starter. I guess if if, if I'm doing it now, I'm not really. This isn't a this is a very very tentative subject to change projection. But I would have Kendall Diggs as my starter at right field, uh, and I think Brenton Clark is right behind him, frankly. Uh, and I think Logan Maxwell obviously deserves a mention. He could play left, right. He could DH, whatever. A pretty reliable bat. So you imagine he's going to be in the mix there and get a plenty of starts. Uh, I think right field's an option there for him if Kendall isn't able to get back and healthy after that shoulder surgery. Uh, I'd also like to call, throw Colton Reynolds in, who homered the other day. Uh, you know, big, strong kid. I believe he transferred from Crowder. Um, and so you've got plenty of options there at right field. Until told otherwise, I'm just assuming when Kendall Diggs gets back that he moves back to right field. That could change. Perhaps it's DH. Perhaps he gets back there at first base. Perhaps he's not in the lineup at all. Perhaps he's never healthy. We don't know. But just until told otherwise, I'm going to assume that Kendall Diggs is a starter and that he is likely going to return to right field. Um, again, subject to change. We'll see. Uh, but I think Brenton Clark is a guy who I, I just said he's like maybe the best outfielder on the team in fall practice. I don't have him projected to start just yet. But I am really close to doing that. Uh, and I do think him starting in right field and Kendall Diggs starting at DH is very much a real possibility. And speaking of DH, all of these names I've just listed, just throw them all in a hat and pick one out. That's your DH. I mean, you could go so many different directions with this. Guys like Michael Anderson, guys like Nolan Souza, guys like Reese Robinette, uh, guys like even Gabe Frazier, Brenton Clark, whoever you want to throw in there. Max Logan Maxwell has started at DH a lot in his career. He's obviously an option. Uh, Kendall Diggs was, I believe, first team all SEC or second team all SEC as a DH just two years ago. Certainly could see him there, could see Pepe there. Uh, there are really, there is no shortage of options. So, like, I'm sure it's going to be a thing that evolves throughout the year where you'll probably see 10, 12 different guys log some time there at the DH spot. That's probably an exaggeration, but I, I don't really I mean, you know, we can have a discussion about it, but really it just comes down to who's starting at the other positions, who's the guy left out, take the top one left, right. Arkansas can mix and match plenty. Uh, but overall, guys, that's that's pretty much how I see it. Uh, let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear like who you feel like I'm. maybe I'm sleeping on, who you think I didn't give enough credit to, like maybe what your lineup looks like. I'd love to hear that. And as it gets in closer to the end of fall practice, maybe I'll put out like a definitive, this is what I think, or this is what I think should be the lineup. Maybe that type of thing. Uh, I'm not ready yet to like go out on a limb. We're two weeks into fall practice. I want to see these kids play a little bit more, but uh, it's been a lot of fun watching these scrimmages. It's been a lot of fun watching this team and seeing how much talent there is. And uh, DVH said it the other day when he was getting inducted into the Hall of Honor, but uh, you, you, he thinks you guys are going to like this team, and I agree with him. Uh, so if you haven't gotten out to a scrimmage yet and you're in the area, I highly recommend you do that. Um, but if not, I will be here on the Lockdown Razorbacks podcast to give you the scoops. Uh, and I think I will be back Friday. I think me and Curtis are going to do a little dual action one topic of basketball, one topic of baseball. And so I look forward to doing that. Uh, but I appreciate you joining me on another episode of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I have been Andrew Ellis, and it has been a pleasure to bring you the baseball scoop.